I find this next story equally exciting and frightening. For less than $1,000, you can now own a 3D printer, hook it up to your home computer, and make anything your mind can imagine. Trinkets are easy, gadgets are a breeze. Even a new car is possible if you have the technical know-how. With 3D printing, it seems you can print the future, and the internet is full of its wonders. But with the good also comes potential for bad, and any number of experts are willing to show you how. In the awe-inspiring world of 3D printing, the line between ingenuity and insanity is being blurred. Top speed when she's up and running. About 40 mile an hour on electric. And on gas? 70. Wow. Yeah. How clever are these Canadian engineers? They thought up this futuristic car, then they built it using a 3D printer. I feel very privileged, the first passenger. <laughs> And how many lives will be saved with this medical miracle? Making body parts like ears and noses. This used to be science fiction, now it's science fact. And it's absolutely amazing. But how crazy is this? Forget saving lives. Now the 3D printer can help kill you with a homemade pistol. So that's the springs and the barrel and the handle? That's the strongest looking barrel I've ever seen. This is the brave new world. This is a really worrying development. These things are dangerous. Um, they will kill you and they'll kill those that are standing in front of it. And that's why this is so frightening. Three D printing is simply that: computer-controlled jets of hard plastic, which build incredibly precise and strong three-dimensional objects, layer by layer. Anything your mind can think of, a three D printer can make, and that means Cody Wilson's deadly handgun, which he designed on his laptop computer. Suddenly, it comes to life on a back shed printer. Anyone can have this gun now. This is something you can no longer stop by traditional mechanisms. You get the gun magically produced for you, right? With a, you know, with a click of a button. You can download a gun, and print it on a 3D printer, and it will fire a bullet. Now, it's no surprise we're in Austin, Texas. The Wild West and guns seem to go together. So we're at the local rifle range, and Cody is assembling his freshly printed weapon. This complicated part right there. Putting this DIY gun together is child's play, until you remember that it fires real bullets. We're ready for the test fire. We far enough back? Yeah. <laughs> Cody has misnamed his pistol the Liberator. This particular model is a work in progress, so he wisely chooses discretion over valor, using a piece of fishing line to pull the trigger. Now that was a pretty convincing shot. At close range, it's obvious <laughs> that this pistol could kill you. Cody, an American magazine called you one of the most dangerous people in the world, are you? I took it as a compliment at the time, because I say, well, dangerous to what? Dangerous to whom? Uh, John Cody Wilson. 25-year-old Cody is an anarchist with no love of rules. And what's frightening is this university law student says that everyone, no matter what age, should have the right to a gun. Here's your 5.56 NATO. It's a common military round. And how many times have you fired that? This magazine has been fired hundreds of times. At home, in his kitchen, come design laboratory, Cody's got parts for working pistols, rifles, and even machine guns, all manufactured on 3D printers. 
you're now a gun manufacturer. If someone rang from Australia and said, can you print me a gun, would you print it? I'd say download it and print it yourself. Now, nobody had really cared much about 3D printing until Wilson put his simple gun design on the internet. Then it grabbed headlines right around the world. Since then, the downloads have passed the minion mark. Would you like to see a million guns around the world all printed on a 3D system? <laughs> no, no. I want people to recognise that this is possible and achievable and all the kind of implications that follow forth. But aren't you intellectualising something that the simple matter is, you put your gun design on the internet, a child of 12 or 14 downloads it, prints it out on a family printer, yeah. takes it and shoots himself or shoots somebody. Yeah, yeah. Do you feel responsible? No, I don't feel responsible. This, this is the question in the end. Technologies allow us to do things, right? We can misuse these technologies. This gun is undetectable. It's untraceable. It's easy to make and it's cheap. You simply hit the button. It's that notion of click, print, fire. That's worrying. Every shot fired from a Cody Wilson Liberator pistol reverberates with horrified police departments all around the world. The New South Wales cops were so troubled that they immediately printed their own gun. The test was a disaster, and Commissioner Andrew Scipioni wants the world to know about it. If you look at that trigger mechanism, um, that's the part that, that's all that was left. It, it took the, exploded. It took the top off it. Um, there were fragments going everywhere. Um, there, were, there were bits and pieces that were burnt. So it was a pretty catastrophic failure. The barrel would Katie Wilson in. insists the New South Wales police deliberately sabotaged so, his 3D design, a claim that the commissioner laughs at. But he's not laughing at the mayhem that these unlicensed weapons will cause. So, you know, the dangers are twofold at least. One, if you're in front of it, um, these things will kill you. Let, make, no, make no bones about it. These are lethal. Both but, ends of the gun. But know. you could well be the victim if the thing exploded in your face because when we did the test fire, you could have been the victim by simply holding onto it. Legally, where does someone stand? Well, in New South Wales, to manufacture that gun, to possess that gun, to use that gun is a crime, and that carries substantial penalties. If a child made your gun yeah. and blew his hand off, yeah. what would you say? Well, that's a product liability question. And I'm not sure if, you know, it's, the implications are interesting because we... Isn't it a hand question? Isn't it a human question? Isn't it no, sad? No, it's simply a question of, like, compensation. And, well, someone damaged themselves or someone hurt themselves. I mean, you should assume that it will be misused. You're dealing with a... a a little explosive. Now, while a gun-toting anarchist in Texas is stealing the 3D printing headlines, Missed. it's worth remembering the wonders of this brave new world. Across the other side of America, in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, doctors are using 3D machinery to save lives and not take them. This is a half a million dollar printer hooked up to this computer here. It's a bit like one you might have at home, except much more expensive and much more high tech. Imagine instead of your inkjet cartridges with two or three colours, you put a wonderful mix in this printer of human body cells and biodegradable stuff, and you then program this computer to print out, let's say, a human nose that's been lost in an accident or other body parts. For us, we are working on over 30 different types of tissues and organs. So we hope to keep increasing the number of these tissues so we can get to patients in the future. This is where we do all the molecular biology in this side. Dr. Anthony Attler from the Wake Forest Institute for Regenerative Medicine is now being touted as a likely Nobel Prize winner for medicine. He's already making ears, noses and skin on his 3D printer. And he says it's just the beginning. You know, right now we're actually using printing to target many different kinds of organs, and we divide those into flat structures. Uh, flat, like skin? Like, like skin, skin. Okay. tubular structures, like blood vessels, hollow, non-tubular organs, like stomach or bladders, 
And then finally, the most complex, the solid organs, like the heart, the kidney. That's very quiet. Yes. A little bumpy, though. Yeah. Well, from kidneys to cars, with 3D printing, it's out of your imagination that stops you. It's a bit of a merry go Getting dizzy, yeah? Up in Winnipeg, Canada, this car of the future is called the Irby. It's the brainchild of Jim Corr and some engineering mates. So is that heavy, Chris? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Do you see a day, Jim, when everything of this car can be done on the computer and 3D printed? Let's say 60% of the car right now, with today's technology, could conceivably be 3D printed. And if you, if you had unlimited budgets, uh, you probably could get to even 90% because they can 3D print stainless steel now, they can 3D print uh, plastics, they can 3D print uh, almost any material that you can think of, you know, a biological yeah, material. Jim's Irby is the prototype for the new, even greener, 3D printed car. It will have a top speed of 115 kilometers per hour. And they're going to drive it across America, from New York to Los Angeles, almost on the smell of an oily rag. That's our goal. And we want to transport two people and a dog across the country safely. For 10 gallons. Using 10 gallons, that's uh, twice, twice this amount. For the whole way, for, for what, the 3,000 cases? Yeah, for it? the whole trip, yeah. That's crazy. It uh, seems crazy. The guys uh, wanted me to check the calculations a few times. <laughs> Irby One was printed here in Minneapolis. Red Eye is, um, uh, is where we came to print the car. Uh, Does that sound funny, to print a car? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what we're going to do here. And this car assembly line of the future is also where the new Irby is being printed. Today, it's turning out the bumper bars. Right, what's being printed now is, is this fender, or the other side of this fender is being printed here. Can you believe it? No. <laughs> I can't believe it. So the car will come out of there? The car, the 40, 50% of the car, half the car is going to come out of this machine. Meanwhile, back in Texas, Cody Wilson continues to test his printed pistols. <laughs> okay, I've never seen that before. Ignoring the failures, he continues to taunt police forces all over the world, including our own. As you can see, the barrel's fine. And the gun did not explode into a thousand pieces. Uh, that I think this is a fair piece of counter propaganda. Your move, New South Wales. When I first saw this and was first told about it, I almost thought it was uh, like a chapter out of a Hitchcock movie. It was sort of that bizarre. And of course, almost unbelievable. How wrong was I? Hello, I'm Liz Hayes. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.